Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the morning pre-market analysis and trade plan setup for Wednesday, May the 21st, 2014. My name is Doug McKay. I am the founder and head moderator for Quantum Leap. Uh, we are a private uh, organization. Uh, we have a private Skype room. Uh, we come together and talk about the market, talk about trading, and then each morning we come into this uh, live go-to session, and I do my uh, morning analysis and then set my trade levels up and my targets for the day. If you're interested in uh, finding out more information, you can send me a Skype contact request. You will need a, uh, a Skype uh, account to come into the uh, room, although uh, next month we should have the new website uh, uh, partially up and running, and we'll be moving the chat over into StealthTrader.com. Um, right now, my Skype contact is Doug underscore McKay. will be the one from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Of course, you can send me an email at uh, d.mckay at StealthTrader.com, and lots of uh, exciting things about to happen with, uh, with Stealth Analytics and Stealth Trader. Anyway, uh, we are going to go through a routine that we go through every morning. Uh, this starts with the macro to the micro. We look at the key numbers, then we look at the trends within the different uh, time frames, and then we get into some more in-depth chart analysis and uh, volume profile analysis. So if you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, you might want to skip ahead. We can't because we're preparing for our trading day. But before we do anything, I have to get the uh, legals out of the way. This information is for the purpose of educating members who want to expand the knowledge of the business of trading. It's not for trading or investment advice. You and only you are responsible for the trades or investment decisions to make. Trading features or any, any instrument involves risk or loss. Please consider carefully whether features or options are appropriate to financial situation. Only risk capital should be used for trading features or options. Investors could lose more than initial investment. Nobody at Quantum Leap is a certified trading advisor. We are retail traders operating within a self-organized learning environment. Past performance which is not indicative of future results. Any trades that you see in Quantum Leap are for education purposes only. Please trade your own trade plan, your own due diligence. Okay, lots of, lots of stuff to get through, so let's uh, jump right into it. Of course, today uh, is uh, Fed Day, uh, so we could just see a lot of rotation and uh, horizontal development until we get uh, you know, to Fed, although we do have uh, some FOMC members speaking earlier uh, in the day that could uh, set this market off. But let's go through the numbers. We're above the year open, 1837.75, uh, so we are in a bull year. We are below the all-time high and the year high at 1898.50. Our month open is 1879.50. We're right in that zone right now. Our month the high is the all-time high and the year high, and our month low is 1854.50, which we are above right now. We're above the previous month open, but below the high and uh, uh, right around the close. You can see that uh, you know we're right in this distribution zone. Uh, nothing really jumps out uh, on the intraday or in the macro numbers. So let's go to the intraday. We opened yesterday's Globex 81.50, had a high of 84.50 in the Globex and a low of 79. Then we opened auction in range at 18.80.50. We one ticked higher, and then we broke that key level uh, that uh, we talked about. And let's bring yesterday's uh, profile up, and we'll just do a quick analysis of what we were talking about. There seemed to have been uh, a little bit of uh, confusion. So yesterday, my main hypothesis was we were going to get short below the 78.75, and I'm not going to go into all the reasons why, but 78.75 was the line in the sand, and then you wanted to get short with your first scale before you got to the 77, and then look for a move down to test that 75.75, 75, and you know our targets below. Well, we open at 1880.50. Our high on the open was 80.75. Then we came down and tested the uh, the 78.75. Uh, it was our low there, so there was a first test there. Then they tried to get back above it, and they only got to 80 and a quarter, so a lower high. And then they came down and they broke it. 
and it just kind of chopped around here. Now I don't watch the one minute because I think there's too there's too much noise on the one minute. But once we broke the uh, the 78.75, the entry would have been 77.75 or 77.50, um, and you wanted to try to get your first scale off. So you're really looking at 77.75 to get scaled at 77 with the you know, possibility of coming down and testing this uh, 7575. Once we got down to that trade area, we just sort of chopped around, tested the 7875 uh, again, but didn't make it, only got there at 25. Now you can see up until this point, we did not have a close above the VWAP. So we all open auction in range and in value. Then we had a uh, I don't know, what was our uh, opening swing? I think it was uh, two points. Oops. Our opening swing was two and three quarter points. So you had a wide opening swing and you know you didn't have OTF participation and we didn't have any clear direction on the delta. So this is telling you that we're looking at a rotational day. It's setting up for a rotational day. Then the other clue we were waiting for, and you don't want to, until you get a close above the VWAP, you don't want to be thinking long at all at this point in time because you're looking at weakness coming in here with a possible rotation lower. And then we came up here. Now, I probably would have taken, you know, the uh, the short off of the VWAP. I was on a train yesterday, so I uh, wasn't able to execute. Um, but then you came up and you tested this level here. Now, this is the first time you had your close above the VWAP. Now, if you're short and you're scaled and you've you know you've scaled a couple times, you're building Theo. So if you know if you're trading with the idea that you're going to stay in the same direction and look for that rotation back down to, uh, to test that 69 and a quarter, which was 68 and a quarter, uh, and then possibly go down and hit the microcomposite VPOC and the composite VPOC down at 65, all you're going to do is use your Theo here to get your stop uh, you know, above you know, the range of the day and then hope that uh, they fail off of the 78.75. Well, they didn't quite fail but they tried to push through, you know, five ticks. Now, five ticks is not that big of a break. And we, you know, we came up and we put this double top. At that point in time, you're probably thinking that your probability is to take the IB out to, uh, to the high side, which would be a reasonable expectation until we broke down below the VWAP and we got below the 75. In fact, when I was on the train, I was telling everybody, get short, get short, get short into the break of the IB because you had a double bottom on the IB. Anytime you get a double bottom on the initial balance, as it's developing, you've got an 83% probability of taking out the I, you know, the you know, the double bottom on that IB, and there's a difference between a normal double bottom and a double bottom on the IB, and that's what I was trying to point out in the room. And then once we broke that, we just uh, came down, hit our uh, target at the CHVN at 72.50, uh, uh, kind of chopped around there, and then came down, tested that 69, which was a key level, and before, below 69, we rotated down and took out our first target at 67 and a quarter, our second target at 66.50, and then our main target below, which was that uh, microcomposite VPOC and CHVN and uh, composite VPOC, and uh, bounced around off of that, tested the 69, failed, came down again. There was actually a couple nice longs at this point in time uh, for the rotation back up when we kept on uh, you know, defending the developing value area. So, I mean, that's basically, and then we ended up closing at uh, 68 and a quarter uh, right at the VPOC. The VPOC shifted. We had left the VPOC up here all day, and it only shifted down right near the uh, the close uh, on the market on close orders. So um, going back to the uh, homework sheet, um, we had a two and three quarter points. So the, the market was telling us we were going to get a rotational day. Everything pointed to it. Um, we did have all lower intraday numbers, so we are seeing a little bit of weakness, although to me we're just back in the balance. But I think that, uh, you know, 
this balance area is getting played out. It's, uh, it's being stretched out way too long trading in this area. Our value area lower, uh, the high was 76.25 and the low was 65 and a quarter. So value area has come down and Rui broke the IB to the low side, but we broke it way outside of the pocket at 11.05 central. And then we did uh, slightly higher volume at 1.3 and 1.4 respectively. Currently right now, we have a overnight high of 1874.25 and a low of 6650. Uh, so our ATR targets to the upside 8350 for the full session and 57 and a quarter uh, for uh, the low. So, but this can change as the as the day uh, you know uh, continues and we get into the RTH session. But right now, the full session high. And, uh, and low gives us these ATR targets. We do have news today. It is a Fed day, so I'm thinking that uh, we're probably going to get some consolidation until we get into the Fed meetings. And of course, and then depending on what uh, they announce, uh, we could get uh, a, sp a spectacular move outside of this balance zone. So we've got FOMC deadly speaking at 9 central, crude at 9.30 central, uh, Yellen's going to speak at 10.30 Central. I don't understand why she's coming to speak before. And you'd think that they would schedule her with the press conference after the fact. But And then we've got, uh, I don't even want to try to pronounce that name, some other Fed member speaking as well. So we've got lots of, uh, of Fed news uh, and there's a lot of risk on the uh, table today. So keep it very tight today because we, you know, we could revalue this market and break out of this uh, value area, especially once they put out the Fed meet meetings, depending on whether or not it's going to be uh, dovish or hawkish. Um, so let's go take a look at the, where we are in the, uh, the trends. Our overall trend is still very strong on the monthly, good slope and separation. So the trend is very strong on the monthly. Same thing on the weekly. We keep testing the 9 EMA, but we're holding it. And uh, we don't have a lot of slope, uh, but we do have separation, but the trend is still up on the weekly. On the daily, a little bit different story. We're in this balance zone, and we're consolidating around it, and uh, we're likely to uh, coil and then break out sometime uh, this week if it's not today with the Fed news. Going over to the geometric chart, we hit our energy point we were talking about right at that uh, you know 85 and a quarter area. It was right on time. We failed off of it. We stayed inside of the downward sloping fork and in the lower uh, 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 channel of the upward sloping fork. Uh, right now, I'd be looking at a possibility to the low side of testing the uh, lower line of the long-term upward sloping uh, at 1855-56 area or coming up and testing this energy point again and the upper line of the downward sloping fork at 84 and then the center line on the uh, upward midterm uh, fork at 86, but that's about the only information. We do have an energy point still coming uh, up to us right here, which is due sometime on near the end of the month, but uh, lots of time before we get there. So let's just go back and take a look at our trends coming into uh, the intraday trends coming into the market. You can see that we created a, uh, a technical gap with a FUBAR, Mr. Sneaky, and rotated back up, took out the naked close right here, I'm sorry, the naked uh, cross at 73, and we're currently coming up above the 9 and the 20, but we are sideways. There is no discernible trend on the 4-hour. On the 30-minute, a little bit of a different story. We're starting to get slope and separation uh, to the upside and uh, holding the 9 EMA, so we're starting a possible trend on the 30-minute. On the five minute, the trend is, uh, uh, it has started, although we've created this technical gap. We've got a double top right here, um, but we're likely to go sideways or come down to fill this technical gap first. I would think most likely going to come sideways uh, with a little bit of uh, downward, probably 
come down to that, uh, you know, that uh, 73, 72, 50 area to close this gap uh, before we get to the open. So just keep an eye on that. Uh, but we do have a technical gap. So look for sideways action right now or a little bit of a downward uh, move to come down and test the 9 EMA either through time or through price or a combination of both to close this gap before we either break below it or bounce off it and continue the trend up. So let's go take a look at the, uh, the big picture. So this is the composite. Now this is going to look a little bit, uh, uh, for newer people, going to look a little bit crowded uh, right now. In fact, let me just take, uh, take my, uh, oh. Where's my, oh, let's forget about it. You'll just have to bear with my lines. So right now, the overall <laughs> balance that we're in is this, this micro composite. And that runs from February 21st all the way through to yesterday. And the most accepted price within this balance area is the 1865. That also happens to be the most traded price on the composite, which is this black profile that goes back to October the 9th, 2013. So we definitely have, you know, acceptance, price acceptance in this balance zone. Now the big value area is 79.50 to the upside, okay, and uh, 39.50 to the downside. So we're inside of value and inside of this balance zone. And really, I would put the def uh, the uh, the other side of balance up here at the 79 uh, and uh, 79 and a quarter, uh, and then down here the 55 and a quarter. Of course, the value area low is all the way down here at 39, but we want to define areas that we can trade off of, and 55 would be where I would be really pressing the short, and uh, with the move into that 49, but bigger number is down here at 43.50, because that's where they accepted price before moving and uh, coming up into the upper, di uh, upper distribution here. Now, inside of this area, Okay, we've got a, a couple different uh, profiles. We've got the uh, the one here where we were trying to hold balance above the 64 and above the 68 and a quarter with the uh, micro composite VPOC at 72.50. It's also a CHVN, so you know that's definitely going to be a magnet as long as we stay inside of the larger value area high of 79 and a quarter. Um, but then within the shorter time frame, the last four days, uh, we've you know, come down and tested the 65 a couple times, but we're actually accepting price a little bit higher at 67 and a quarter. Um, the value area for that is 74.75, so we're testing the 74.75. If we get inside of this value area, then I'd be looking for a move, and I'd... Uh, be shorting this into 72.75 with the probability of continuing and testing this, you know, 69 and a quarter area and the 67.50 with 65 being a huge magnet. The larger value or, or balance area that we've got going on here, our value area low is all the way down at 61 and a quarter. So I'm going to be using 61 and a quarter versus 59. Uh, for a couple different reasons. Uh, I can get short into that 59 and get funded prior to it, but it's where the value area low is on the, you know, the medium size microcomposite and it also coincides with the last four days uh, right there. So 61 uh, and a quarter is going to be, uh, you know, a level that I'll do business at. Um, now, if we break above the 79 and a quarter, we're getting above uh, all the value areas. You've got a value area here at 80.50, but I'll be watching that 80.50 anyway because the range high from yesterday was 80.75. And we've got a naked close just above it at uh, 82.50. That'll be my initial uh, target above the breakout 
of that 79 and a quarter and 80, 75 level. The big number above us is going to be up here at 1890. 25, it's where we tried to hold value uh, before, after making the new high before we fell back into this current balance. So if they get above uh, you know, this balance zone and break out of the value area and break above this 83, we've got a naked close at 85, a little bit of resistance at uh, 87.75, but likely to go up and hit that 90 because I think if we break out of this value area, the uh, the bears are going to uh, you know, have a little bit of capitulation and the bulls are going to take over and try to make another run for that 1900 and whether we get there or not is still a question. Anyway, let's go to our uh, overnight chart. So our Globex high right now, uh, our overnight high is 75.75. Seventy Just below the value area uh, uh, high from yesterday at uh, 76 and a quarter and our overnight low is all the way down at 66.50. All right, now we've got a little bit of a triple distribution uh, happening right now. You've got a LVN on the overnight at 74.50. Uh, that is your uh, IB uh, high from yesterday, and then you got this LVN right here at 73.50 with the overnight VPOC just uh, below it at 72.75, which is right at that CHVN and former microcomposite at 72.50. So overnight is 72.75, also happens to be the 50% uh, retracement for yesterday. <coughs> so I'm going to be using this uh, this LVN right here on the uh, Globex and this 73.75 as a trade area. And I want to hold the 74, but I want to get short uh, with a break of the 73 into coming into this lower distribution uh, and, you know, a move towards taking out the uh, close at 68 and a quarter and our uh, naked VPOC at 68 and a quarter. So we can get rid of this and we can start setting up our, our levels. So we're currently trading 75. We're inside of value. We've got the overnight high right there. So if we open in this range right here and we hold this uh, 73, uh, uh, 75 area, let me just move this up just slightly. Uh, I would look to get uh, the overnight uh, high taken out. If I'm pretty, you know, you got a pretty good probability that this overnight high at 75.75 is going to be tested either before the open or just on the open. And then we've got our value area high at uh, 76 uh, and a quarter with the former, uh, you know, the former VPOC where we were most of the day up here at 77. So I'm going to use the 76 and a quarter as an actual area to do business because if we get above it, then we got a good uh, probability that we're going to rotate up to where they like to do business up here. And it's going to be a tight target, okay? So you've got to be nimble right here. And, uh, and if you're unsure, don't take it. But if you've got conviction to the upside and they're ripping through the value area high and you're not seeing resistance, uh, you know, responsive sellers stepping in, go ahead and get long into the 77.50 because it's going to be a good target, sorry, 77 and a quarter. Because it's going to be a good target because that's where value was most of the day before we broke down. Uh, so they're likely to come up there and look for sellers there. And then you've got the 79 uh, area just below the 79 and a quarter and this uh, 79.75. So I'd be using that as an area for possible responsive uh, sellers stepping in. But if we break that uh, 79, you got a nice push into testing the range high at 80.75. And you've got lots of targets up here. You've got 80.75, 81.50, 82.50 naked close, range high at 83. Uh, and then another uh, naked close up here at 85. Uh, so you've got lots there. So I wouldn't even wait for the 
the test of the range high and the open from yesterday, I would uh, take the break. Uh, you know, if you don't get the move off of the break of the value area high into the 77 and a quarter, you know, wait to see how they react at the 79 to 79, 75, and if they break that, then get long into this, because I don't think the range high is going to hold us here. I think we've got you know, too much uh, in this area. And I put my first target, of course, at the 8150, and everybody knows how strong my feelings are for that 8150, because that was the microcomposite VPOC where they uh, you know, uh, tried to hold value when they put in that high at 92.50. And then with the possibility of pushing through, and there's really nothing to hold us uh, down after that until we get up to the 87.75. Uh, uh, so 87.75 would be the next area that I'd be looking for possibility of responsive uh, sellers stepping in. And then if we get above this 87.75, that's where I think you'll see the capitulation and we'll move uh, to take out this 90 and a quarter, test this, uh, this microcomposite VPOC. We're then inside of this value area right here and you've got 94 uh, and a quarter just above and then of course the big number and our extended target to the upside right now, which will be the 98.50 the all-time high with 1900 being just above it and then 1902.50 and then of course that 1910 uh, for the rule of 10 if it uh, plays out. Now if we s stay in and we hold uh, let me know, Howard, if they put in a new overnight high before I close this uh, down. If they stay inside of value and they come down and they test the 74, 73, uh, 50 area and they break through it, then you got a good probability on the short. So take the short into the 72.50 and the overnight VPOC and 72.50 will be my first target below. And then with the possibility of continuing through. Now you do have a uh, remember that 7075. Uh, you know we were talking about this uh, when we were trading back here. We were using 7075 at, uh, at 1.4 a trade level. We've got a little bit of an LVN there, so I'm going to be watching that area as well. And then if we break the 7075, then I'll accelerate it to the downside for the move down to the 6975 CHVN, but more importantly down to the 69 and a quarter and then the 68 and a quarters which is my main target below. Below the 69 area, the 68.75 area, you've got to be thinking that they're going to come down to this uh, 67 and a quarter and 65 and you've got the overnight low at 66.50. So I'm going to just, you know, it's a lot of targets but I want you to be aware of these numbers. So 67 and a quarter and then the value area low is right at 65 and a quarter. And I'm going to use that, even though it's a major magnet, I'm going to use it as a trade level because if we come down here, we got you know, pretty strong buying yesterday off of it. I'll be seeing if they try to step in here again. If they don't step in here again, the next uh, target below is that 61.75. And then, of course, down on the other side of this uh, major uh, balance here, then I'll be looking for a push down to test 59.75. And then the big number and where I think we really have to hold uh, to give us any shot of uh, another run for 1900 is this 55 and a quarter. Uh, below 55 and a quarter, then I'd be looking at the first target down here at 49.50 and 45.25, the other side of balance around that. And then my major target down here is going to be that, uh, you know, uh, oh, come back, is going to be that 43.50. And I'm putting some I'm putting some uh, numbers further out here because of the Fed meeting, 
So we're just going to take a look at you know possible weakness. Okay, and then below that 43, that key level is going to be that 39. Because if you're below 39, then you get the year open at 37.75. Okay, and they're definitely going to go and try to take that out. Um, and then you've got 36 naked cross, or naked uh, VPOC, I should say. So below this, you've got 37.75, year open. And then the target at 36. And of course, then that puts us into this lower area right here, which is that triple distribution, uh, which I expect to come down here. And we've got those three numbers, 35 and a quarter, 29.50. And I think we're going to come down here and chop once we get back down here. And 25 and a quarter. With uh, the other side of that balance being the 21, the 21 and a quarter, 21 and a quarter. And anybody that's been in these homework sessions have heard this time in and time again. So these numbers should not uh, uh, not surprise you in the least. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the Russell. I've already done uh, some of the work on the Russell already. So we're currently uh, trading. We're going to be opening up outside of value and outside of, uh, and we've got a new overnight high here, which let me just bring the overnight up here. All right, so we've got a new overnight high, and we're just testing it right now uh, at 11.0190. So likely now that uh, you know we're we're coming up and breaking outside a range, the Russell could be uh, could be leading us here. So you know the first thing you got to think of was we're going to open up outside of value and outside of range and above 1100. So first thing you want to look for in the Russell is uh, with looking for initiative buyers stepping in here outside of range, outside of value. So I'd be looking for them to hold this 1100 and a quarter range high, take out the overnight high. The first target above right now is this 1103.80, uh, which is the CLVN right here. And let's just take a look at it, this on a bigger picture. Because uh, we've got this blunt area right here on, on the profile. You know, we've got this 1103.80 right here. We've got blunt area with undetermined value here uh, below it, and then a blunt area above it with a lot of undetermined fair value. So uh, I'd be using this 1103.80 as a defining line to get long or get short um, in a major way. Because above it, then I'm then you're you know inside of uh, this balance area right here with the value area high being 11.15 and the value area low from the bigger balance at 11.0140. And you've got a microcomposite VPOC that's still naked right here at 11.09. And this 11.09 has been a key area that we keep coming back up to uh, and trading. Um, so I'd be looking for a move above the 11.04 into the, and I would scale before that 1106 area, but hold on and keep one for a move to the 1108 to 1109 area with the possibility of coming up and testing the 1112 and 1115 are the, uh, are the two numbers that I'm looking at in this upper area with the key, key one above us at 1770 because above 1770, you've got the microcomposite uh, VPOC and the composite VPOC uh, right here at 11.21, and I think we'll rotate back up towards this 11.21 to see if they can find some sellers up there. If we hold below the 11.03, then I'd be looking for a move down to test the 11.01, uh, 1100 area, uh, and then below that, uh, I think the number really is that 10.96 area again, because if you look on yesterday's profile, 
Okay, you've got uh, uh, an LVN right here that separates the major distribution at that 1096.75 and 1096.10 is the CHVN in this area with your micro or your naked VPOC uh, just below it at 95. So if we get below that, then I'd be looking for a move down and seeing some weakness down into the 95 area and then the value area low. Uh, and your uh, your LVN down here and a uh, CLVN uh, down here at 93.50, and then you've got your overnight low at 92.50, and then 91 and a quarter, uh, which is the CLVN, which is just above this value area low. Below that, then I'd be looking for a move down to that 1089 area. There's really not much before that. The key line that you want to hold right here down here is, you know, well, the, you've got this 84 level, but I really think, you know, you know, we can come down and test this 82 without a problem and still find uh, responsive buyers. But if we break the 75, 70, uh, 75, 50 level, then I think we get capitulation and we get a bigger move down towards the 64, 50, and I think that we leave this distribution, uh, whoops, we leave this distribution area behind. Let's take a quick look at gold. Howard, how am I doing for time? About eight minutes. Okay. So gold right now, we're, you know, we're continuing to consolidate inside of this distribution zone with the two key points being, you know, 92, 10, and 8480. The balance area that we're in right now, the microcomposite VPOC is 1290, and then we've got the value area low at 1285, and the value area high at 1304. And then this 1298.20 is what I've been using and waiting to, I'm still running my long right now, and my stop is still sitting here at 75 uh, and a quarter, um, and I've got lots of deals, so I'm just locking in uh, profit right now because I'm worried about the fact that we're not breaking and holding above this 1300. Uh, so as long as we stay down here, I still got a chance that I could get uh, my stop taken out, and at this point in time, I've accepted 75 and a quarter as where I want to lock in my profit. I've got you know, over 24,000 in Theo on this trade right now, uh, but below 76.40, I've got to think that they're going to see some more downside and come down towards that 1258, uh, 1261 uh, area, even possibly down here into this, uh, you know, this 1241 uh, area, and I think that we leave this distribution behind. But as long as they hold inside of this distribution, I'm looking for them to test this 98 and a quarter. Uh, and as soon as they break 98 and a quarter, I'll be looking to get long into the 1300s again, and hopefully get a run up. Uh, you know, with my first target being 130410, and then if we break this 1306 area, we've got the uh, the 1309 area again, and then 1313. But the big number is this 131580, because if we can break above the 131580, then we're going to finally break out of this balance, and I think we get the bigger move to test that last swing high at 133140. Because remember, you know, just taking a, uh, a look at the bigger picture, we still have not invalidated this you know, these two patterns. We've got the descending broadening wedge, which is a major bottoming pattern, and then after we broke out, we created the cup and the handle, and the handle is still valid until we get, uh, you know, down uh, in around that 61 area. So as long as we're still within this pattern, you know, my, my long-term goal is to stay long gold, because if we break out, We've got a major measured move all the way up into 1600, and I think that will coincide with a major retracement within the uh, the indices themselves. So that's what I'm looking at today. Remember, you know, we do have Fed, so there's lots of risk on the table. So you know, make sure that you know where you're wrong quickly, okay, and uh, don't take chances, uh, you know, out there. Uh, take your losses quickly and look for another trade. We get another 
high on the Russell here. Let me just see what we got here. 1102.20. And I think the Russell is telling us a story that they're going to try to take it to the upside this morning. <coughs> so just uh, watch your levels carefully, trade well, trade safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side. into this market. I got to fix my charts up here. So right now we are in the upper channel. A test of the upper Keltner is going to take us up to 76.50. A test of the center line will take us down to 71, that 70.70 area, and then uh, a test of the lower Keltner will take us back down to that 65. Pretty straightforward looking there uh, in our levels on the uh, on the ES. On the Russell, we've got a walk the line happening right now. Um, so just see how far we walk. We should come back down and test that 1101.20 area uh, at some point in time on this move to see if we can stay above the upper uh, Keltner line on this uh, walk the line setup. I've got to get my charts out, don't I? All right. Man, these charts are getting 